my skin's kind of loose right here. If you can see, like it's loose. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is just kind of going to be an update, like postpartum and baby and all of that. We are currently three weeks and a day. Yeah, three weeks and a day postpartum for me. Um, for Kai, three weeks and a day old. He's just right here. Um, I'll show you. He's right there sleeping. Um, this is a rock and play. I don't let him sleep in this like without my supervision. So anytime he's in this, it's either like um, if I'm in the kitchen cooking or if I'm eating, I just got done eating lunch. So that's why he's in it. Uh, but he doesn't like sleep in there unattended, um, just so you know. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get into the video. Honestly, I don't really have a plan for this video. I just, uh, I don't want to have such a structure just because I feel like this will come off as like more genuine of like exactly what's going on. First things first, let's talk about Kai. He hasn't been to the doctor since he was a week old. Yeah, like, or a few days. I mean, yeah, it was a week, a week old. Um, and he had already exceeded 10 pounds by then. If you don't know, he was born at nine pounds, 10 ounces. And at his week appointment, he was 10 pounds, two ounces, I believe. 10 pounds, one or 10 pounds, two. He is in size one diapers. He was in size one diapers since he was born. The pediatrician actually came in while we were at the hospital and said, these diapers are too small. So they went and got us ones while we were still in the hospital. He's out of his newborn clothes, like he wore a couple newborn things um, just because we were like, well, we have this stuff, so let's put it on him. Honestly, he was straight, he should have been straight into zero to three months. So everything he's wearing now is zero to three months. He is being breastfed, so he has not had a bottle yet. He'll probably get his first bottle on Sunday, which will be the day before he's four weeks old. Um, we just wanna try to introduce it because there are going to be times where he's gonna have to get a bottle. So we wanna make sure he'll take a bottle before those times come. And he's doing great breastfeeding. He eats all the time. And the issue with him eating all the time is sometimes he eats a little too much and then he throws up a lot. He hasn't done that so much lately, but he does still kind of throw up quite a bit. Sleeping wise, he sleeps a lot during the day. Um, usually his big like feeding times are first thing in the morning because he had a big chunk of sleep. He'll eat like a whole bunch between eight o'clock and nine o'clock or 7.30 and 9.30 or so, like somewhere between there. He just wants to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Then right before bed, so usually I try to lay him down at like 9.45 or 10 for like a big chunk of sleep. By big, I mean like three to four hours, which is not that much, but um, right before that, so usually from like seven to 7.30ish till then, he'll just kind of eat pretty much every half hour um, to prepare himself for that. It just kind of depends on the night. But I sleep in like a recliner chair over there. I don't know if you can see it. And then his, his bassinet is right there. And so basically when I hear him kind of stirring, before he cries too much, hopefully I wake up, usually I wake up before he cries, cries. Um, I'll just pick him up, feed him, and try to put him right back. And usually if he has, if he's not like crying or anything like that, that's all I do. Um, if I put him, I don't like burp him or anything like that in the night, just because he goes right back to sleep most of the time. So that's been working for us. He does have a little bit of a tongue tie, but it hasn't like posed any problems. The only thing is, is that when you first give him a pacifier, because we do give him pacifiers, just because sometimes I like know he acts hungry and he, I know he doesn't need to eat and I don't want him to puke, so I'll give him a pacifier. And we try to give him like a variety of pacifiers. So honestly, my favorite is the Suvi from Avent, um, but I just kind of give him any of the ones we have. We have a bunch of sample ones that we got like from sample boxes and stuff. So I try not to give him any particular one so he's so he doesn't get picky. Sometimes it's a struggle at first for him to keep it in and I think that has to do with his tongue tie. But it's not as bad as Jay's was so it's fine. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you don't know, but he does have a cut on his head from um, when I had a C-section 
if you don't know, I had an emergency C-section. It was wild. You can go back and watch my birth video. I'll try to link it above um, or down in the description. But you can watch that to get all the details. But he was cut and they put Dermabond on his head and it has not fallen off yet. There's a few pieces that have like peeled away. So I've kind of tried to take them off. But um, yeah, it's still on there. I'll show you him and like at some point. And then I think I have some clips. I'll just insert them right here of him just smiling or he, he uh, is really good at lifting his head up just like from the get go from when he was born. He was really good at that. Honestly, he really doesn't cry that much. His cry is like, <coughs> like it's like so weird. So he's getting ready to cry right now. Oh baby, aw, mommy made fun of you. I don't know what he weighs right now. I'm planning on going back to the breastfeeding clinic um, just to kind of see how much he's getting in a, a feeding and then to weigh him as well because I'm curious to know how much he weighs. We'll do like an update once he goes to his one month appointment, but that'll be in like a week and a half or two, something like that. For like swaddling and sleep, we use a multitude of things. And I think it's it's been fine because he's not getting like picky about what he sleeps in, but he spits up on stuff and then we have to clean it and then... We have to use something else. So he sleeps um, in either a halo sleep sack or the Copper Pearl swaddle blanket, which is like so stretchy and so nice. If you're gonna have just a regular swaddle blanket, that's the one to have because it'll stretch and like, oh, it's just, and it's so soft. Yeah, I have a link below for the, for Copper Pearl swaddles. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite thing is the Love to Dream sleep sack. So I have both of them. I have the newborn Love to Dream sleep sack. And these are like the swaddle up where their arms are swaddled up. And then I also have the like next level sleep sack where the arms can zip off. So you can either keep them on or zip them off. He slept in the newborn one like two times and he, it's way too, he's too big for it. So it says it goes up to like 12 or 13 pounds. I don't know how how heavy he is now, but he does not, it's way, like he looks like this in it. So I just went ahead and moved him to the, the next one. Um, and then when he starts rolling over, I'll, I'll zip the arms off. But he, I think he likes that position better. I have tried doing the halo sleep sack with his arms out. It didn't work out. He still has his startle reflex really bad. His siblings are doing really great with him. They love him. They want to help with him. Um, it is kind of hard for my daughter because she's a little older and she wants to play all the time. And um, it just always seems like she asks me to play with her when Kai needs to eat or something like that. He's doing great. He's pretty much just like his brother and sister, like kind of low maintenance. And he gets a little gas here and there but he usually works it out pretty easily and he just makes little, you know, whiny noises until he gets it worked out and then he's fine. Moving on to me and postpartum. I'm gonna kind of make this short and sweet because, or I'm gonna try to make it short and sweet because um, I'm gonna do a like more in-depth postpartum video at like a month postpartum or four weeks or maybe I'll wait till six weeks when I get cleared. Again, if you haven't seen um, my birth video, you can go back and watch it to kind of hear more details. Basically, my labor went great, everything was great. I was pretty much at the point of like, probably gonna be pushing in the next couple minutes. My midwife was checking me, she felt his cord, so it's a cord prolapse, emergency situation. Um, so I had an emergency C-section. I did not have an epidural, so they had to put me under general anesthesia, which means I was gonna be asleep for the procedure. Um, they ended up getting him out fine. He was great, besides the cut on his head, which, but I mean, whatever, that's minor compared to what could have happened. And during the process, they also took out a very large cyst that was on my ovary. So C-section plus, plus the cyst, um, that's what happened. The postpartum for me, at first it was tough to like stand up straight. I, I was trying to like navigate how to feel about like trying not to use my abs and that sort of thing. So like initially in the hospital, I wasn't moving around too much and it was really, really hard to breathe like fully in my lungs. So it honestly has been up until like once he was two weeks old, then I felt like I could actually like 
breathe fully without like, I don't know, when you're in pain, it's like you don't breathe deeply into your lungs. So then for a while it felt like, almost like I was like, I don't know, it was just really weird once I got to like breathing deeply again. Um, but initially, like everybody said that my incision looked really great. I didn't know what to think about a C-section incision. So everybody said it looked great. Um, I don't have, there's nothing on the outside. There's no staples, no stitches, no stary strips or whatever you call them. It's literally just like a seam. Um, and I think like right inside the seam is derm bond that's like gluing me together. But my incision has like just gotten better and better and better and better since he came out. <laughs> and the biggest thing has been like trying not to overdo things. Postpartum like bleeding and stuff, when you have a C-section you do still bleed um, and all that, so you still need pads and everything. But I I had a, I lost a lot of blood like during the C-section. So my bleeding has just been like little, but I'm like, it's still happening. My milk came in while I was still in the hospital, no problem. The only thing, I never really got engorged because I was using the Hakka. If you don't have a Hakka, I re recommend it, especially in the beginning when you do, when your milk does come in because you'll waste so much milk like in, in a, a pad. I, Kai's kind of getting a little ready to eat again, I think. One weird thing that has happened with all my kids is that I have one side that produces so much more milk. I finally feel like they're almost, they're, I don't know, it's still producing more milk, but they're a little more even than they were like a few days ago. Um, and that's just frustrating because like I can feel the difference and I can see the difference and whatever, it's not a big deal. At least I'm producing milk, but yeah. I'd say that right now I'm feeling like close, I mean, not normal, but like close to normal when I'm doing like everyday, just normal things. Now when um, I need to like lean back to do something or if I'm laying down, I need to sit up. That's when I can really tell like, okay, I had a surgery and I need to just remember that I had a surgery and to not overdo it. I'm not taking any pain medicine. I pretty much stopped taking pain medicine after two weeks. I was just taking ibuprofen whenever I felt like like I needed it and then eventually I just stopped and things have been fine. I am still taking iron because I did lose all that blood and I'm taking a multivitamin. Okay, the last two things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, because I'll get a lot more in depth in the, the other video here in a few weeks, is number one, um, right about six, seven, six to seven days postpartum, I got super like, I just had all these like, what if, what if, what if, what if this would've happened? What if this would've happened? What if this would've happened? What if I would have waited, like what if we would have, you know, not been induced? Or what if I would have done this during labor instead of this? What if that, what if that? I had so many what if thoughts and it was t just driving me crazy and that's all I could think about. And started thinking about like, this is not gonna be my last baby. I always thought it was gonna be, but I, I now I want another baby. Like, or now, you know, not right now, but like, I don't think this is, the last baby I'm ever gonna have, like that, just so many thoughts and I was like so consumed that I was, like I could not find the joy in like everyday things during those couple days and it was like, it was freaking me out a little bit and I just tried to like tell Russell what was going on and, and I was like, okay, I just need to make sure that after, you know, this might go on for a couple days and then it'll gradually start getting better. So it went on for a few days, like probably four to five days after those initial couple like really bad days and then gradually started getting better. Then I saw my midwife, we talked and she said, as long as it's getting better and it has been. So that is something that I think just all my, emo some, I don't know, my hormones got crazy for a few days and all of that happened and um, it was kind of freaky so like, I would just recommend if that happens to you to talk to somebody, if not like talk to your doctor or your midwife or whatever. Next thing is my postpartum body. I, my, I think my last appointment I was 215, which is a lot for me. Um, I gained about 35 pounds with this baby. I gained 33 with Mara or 35 with Mara, 30 with Jay and 35 with this baby. And I have, the last time I weighed, I was 188, so 215 to 188, whatever that um, loss is, and I weighed yesterday. This is what 
I look like at the moment. Um, so these are just like high waisted Lululemon leggings. Uh, I have like a pretty, you know, my, my skin's kind of loose right here. If you can see, like it's loose. I would show you my, um, my incision, but it's a little lower than I'm comfortable showing. So I'm glad it's low. Like, I'm never gonna have to worry about in a swimsuit because I wear high-waisted swimsuits anyway, but um, yeah, it, it looks really good. It's on it, like one side of it is almost like flat. And then the other side, I guess that's the side that the surgeon like gets everything like tight on. It has this little like lump, not lump, it's skin. Um, Cause it's like, I think it's like pulled so tight together or something. There's this little like bump of skin but honestly, it looks really, really good. It's never looked bad at all. I'm just kind of like going on walks. I'm not, try not trying to overdo it. I'm not picking up the other kids. Um, if I do have to like help Jay, I'll like get him to my knee and have him like push off my knee or something like that. But yeah, it's summertime. I'm not going back to work until the beginning of school in August. And we're just hanging out. We run errands together. The kids go to daycare most of the time for like half day, sometimes a full day or almost a full day. And we're just living the life. I, I'm not gonna lie, some days are still hard when it comes to like postpartum and like anxiety and like, you know, whatever. My emotions are definitely like heightened for sure. But with a new baby and like all the hormones that your body produces I don't know um it is not always easy but it's definitely way better than those few like really rough days like six seven eight nine days postpartum I am planning on doing like a newborn essentials video at least for like what I like a minimal type of person newborn essentials video and we'll do a little update on Kai I'll bring him up here now so oh Bubby here's my big boy he just crying. Hey, show him. Say, look, my name's Kai. Here's, here he is. And if you want to see, this is his, this is where the derma bond is on his head. What's wrong, Bubba? What's wrong? You hungry? He's hungry, I think. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but he's uh, definitely he's hungry. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. I know this is not like super structured or anything, but I just wanted to come on here and be real with you. So, um, I would love if you comment down below what kind, what any kind of video you want to see. Um, you know, I want to put out the stuff that you want to see, and if you have questions, ask questions. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.